This is for my children, and I'm not going to put it on Facebook, but so my oldest daughter's Hillary. She's, I guess, 32. Smart girl, smart girl. And she challenged herself a lot by uh, having children really young by herself, and my goodness, she did so much. She went to community college, got honors, got scholarships to George Washington, studied what she loved to study, which was geology, and I'm just, it's, she's like a rocket science to me that she could do all that, have such beautiful kids. And and then she found a, a partner and they had a baby named, I call him Will or Val, Valentine, Willis. Um, two other kids, Charlie and Calista, beautiful. I've enjoyed spending time with them when they were little. Then Morgan, she's in Denver and uh, she's a really great photographer. I mean, somehow she just captures stuff with video and photography and Really attention to detail when she works. This hula hoop and um, she played violin for a little bit. She was really good at that. And then my son James, he's a. Uh, all my kids have a great sense of humor. They really do. So that that tells me how smart they are. And that's like pat myself on the back. Oh, my kids are so smart. Uh, narcissism, I guess. Um, and I'm okay with that. So. Um, I guess I was a little like Hillary and got myself into a, a single parent position where I was a single mom and it was tough. It was really tough. Finances and not having a partner to be friends with, you know. I dated, but nobody um, really. And uh, then I decided I wanted to get married, so I met a guy and, and we got married really quickly and pregnant. And then later on, as I got into the relationship, I found out he had drinking alcoholism, functioning alcoholism. And um, I, I guess I had trusted him. I just trusted him. I said, okay, let's do it. But he, because of his addiction, he hadn't been real honest with me about finances. And so that made it a little bit more stressful. Plus then being day in, day out in the house with him. And um, honestly, just not really wanting him to touch me. Because I, I didn't like what he was doing with me, not with the kids. He was pretty good with the kids. Um... Sometimes he would drive on the interstate and be passive aggressive because of the situation of me not wanting him to. T I just honestly I didn't really want him when he when he, I just didn't. I, I couldn't change that. I wish I could have, but I just couldn't be okay with that because it just didn't seem like love. Because if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. But anyway, so that was tough, and I won't say I made a mistake. So I got the best kids, but I did eventually have to divorce him, and um, so that was really tough. And then I have a bipolar condition. Uh, that at times was pretty difficult to manage and had to go in the hospital and change medications a lot. And um, things were going on in the household that were tough. I was struggling with my teenagers living with their dad with certain situations with drugs and alcohol and stuff. And my mom was always real supportive. I could talk to her. Like one time I couldn't get to the hospital. I, did my, I was having such anxiety. I just couldn't do it. So I called her at 7 in the morning and... Uh, she like, she goes, go get your slippers. She goes, get two or three pairs of underwear. Get your nightgown, put it in a bag. And then I had a friend who was coming over to take me, so I, I couldn't drive myself. So it was, it was pretty, pretty tough situation. And um, then my mom died. And I, I miss calling her, you know, seeing my mom sometimes. We were different. My sister was a lot more like my mom, but over the course of time, I, I had a great respect for my mom. Um, all of her projects she took on and she's very disciplined very disciplined very creative she could sew and things like that but I think that was hard on the whole family to lose her and then for some reason my sister just stopped inviting me to Thanksgiving and really kind of cut me out of everything in the family and there's they won't do counseling or anything it's just like it's like a wall it's like stone wall in me and um I'm doing pretty good now. I've been working for two years out of the hospital for four, almost four. And um, I just wish the doors would open a communication a little bit so that we could try to work on whatever's bothering them. Um, and I know, you know, m the way my family is that I grew up in on my dad's side is, you know, they're just, they can't do it. They've got enough problems on their own. Um, I'm sad. I, I love my dad, but he's got some problems and... But I guess the most thing that I want 
is I want to talk with my kids. I want to hear what they have to say. And if they're angry, it might help to talk about it. But it also helps to have sympathy and empathy for a person. Like, I'm sure my behaviors at times were, during the bipolar, were just scary and tough, you know, for kids. And um, I can only say that I've done my best to get past that. And finally, I did find a good doctor. But... When someone has a mental health issue, they don't choose it. It's like you would never choose to have a heart attack. You would never choose to have diabetes. You would never choose to be intellectually disabled. It's just something you got to deal with. It's a health issue. And it doesn't mean that I don't love my kids. And I did everything I possibly could to bring their childhood some good things. I really did. I tried everything to enjoy the family and enjoy the kids and do the activities that we could do. And even though their dad and I didn't necessarily love each other, we did do a lot of activities with the kids, vacations, things like that. We had a beautiful house with horses and 4-H and swim team and all that. It's kind of sad. It's really sad. I don't know how to get past that. It's a little traumatic to lose your whole family. But um, I'm just making this video to give to my kids if they want to listen to it. And I do think of them every day. And I wish I could be a positive thing in their life. And I know the past has been pretty traumatic and tough. But I would just say talk to me every once in a while, like once a week, and see how it goes. Because I know you need to build your trust up. But also you need to build your resilience up by understanding the bipolar so that, that it doesn't upset you. Um, I'm working on some stuff in the arts, and thank goodness I was accepted at a museum, which is a dream. That's a dream of mine. Even if I don't build my school that I'm working on, you know, it's a dream to be accepted at a museum, and that I made it. You know, I, I did that. I've done that, and that's huge for me as an artist, you know. Anyway, I love you guys, Hillary, James, and Morgan, and all the grandkids and everything like that, and I do love you. I'm just making this video privately. Just to let you know that, that I think of you and I love you.